introduce you to the producer of the upcoming film, Brothers Keeper. Here is Steve Camp. Steve, thank you so much for uh, coming over and joining us. Thank you, Rick. As I very much appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, i um, like to always get to know you a little bit, so uh, tell me where you're from. Sure. How you, you know, sure. grew up in New Christ. Tell grew me. up, grew up in the uh, south, uh, west suburbs of Chicago. Okay. And uh, back in 2008, I uh, had a chance to move out to Los Angeles. Uh, where I met my two current partners, Joshua Mills and T.J. Amato. Okay. And uh, we started this firm in uh, 2008 and had no idea at the time what God had planned for us, uh, as it turns out that our first feature film that we're going to release is a faith-based film. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are absolutely thr thrilled to uh, be headed in this direction. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, I got to ask then on that, you know, how did that come about? Because, you know, being in the business and, and being especially in Los Angeles, I mean, the first thing you have to realistically say is, there's not a lot of money in faith-based films. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think the guys over in Albany uh, with Fireproof and Courageous have uh -huh. uh, uh, shown that to be not true. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I, we, and we're very proud of what they've done in the business. But ironically, we were uh, given a short story, uh -huh. uh, a 23-page short story called The Gift and the Giver. And uh, as soon as uh, my partner Josh and TJ direct the projects and uh, produce the projects, okay. and I handle the financial affairs. And as soon as Josh read this 23-page short story, The Gift and the Giver, we knew it was something that we had to share with the world, and uh, uh, wow. we're very pleased to be doing so on November 1st. Wow. Now, um, share with us a little bit about the challenges of, of filmmaking. You know, I, I want to give the viewers a, a, real, a realistic picture on you know, what it takes to actually get a film from idea to, and concept sure. to, you know, in theaters. Tell us the challenge. I can that. tell you this, that we started this process in April of 2009. That was right. when we received the call, when Josh <laughs> first received the, uh, the short story, The Gift and the Giver. And oh. here we are four years later, and we're releasing in 30 days, but it's, uh, uh, it's quite the process, obviously. We were very blessed that my two partners, TJ and Josh, have uh, uh, turned this project into a great story. We wanted oh. to tell a good story with Brothers Keeper and not just release a film that is an over-sermonizing or, or a, an illustrated sermon-type film. Yeah. We tell a story with Brothers Keeper that is quite gripping and quite intriguing, and uh, uh, we hope that the story... Uh, will we'll captivate our, our viewers' attentions, but at the same time, our plan was to deliver a message that is undeniable, and in yeah. this case, the message is forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's really a gritty piece, I guess. Sure. I mean, it, it's, it's, you mentioned with, uh, you know, Sherwood pictures and Fireproof and Courageous, just like, this is a lot darker than that. And I think, think of course, the, the topic kind of Sure. Goes it's hand it's hand not necessarily that. darker. It's just, uh, it's very true to life. Our yeah. story was a 1950s period piece about two twin brothers uh, that grew up in southwest Georgia, and a lot of bad things happened to these boys. And our story, uh, TJ and Josh delivered a message that uh, was very true to what the times were like. Times and, yeah. and one of these boys goes to prison, and times in the 1950s in the Southwest Georgia prison weren't nice. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we, you know, there's a little smoking and a little, uh, a little violence, but we were able to secure a PG-13 rating. Okay. Of yeah. course, and uh, uh, we we definitely are pleased with the fact that our message is resonating with youth yeah. throughout America. We're okay. thrilled with that. Okay. Because because yeah, the main characters, everybody are all what. Uh, high school college age kind of not all uh, we actually but the, the main story is about our two twin brothers who are graduating high school okay. one of yeah. the two they're they're identical uh uh, physically, but they're polar opposite spiritually. Okay. One, one of the boys wants to, uh, Rick wants to uh, uh, become a preacher when he graduates high school, and the other twin brother, Andy, doesn't have a clue what he wants to do. He's kind of lost, uh -huh. and a lot of bad things happen, and they get flipped around, and again, uh, the way that they handle these situations in their lives in this film is where we have the message that we believe is, again, undeniable. So why did you choose 1950s South Georgia because I think that you know to be your first film uh, sure. you know you're already putting a period piece and everything it's you like know, let's, God, let's God, make this as challenging as I can. God took yeah. this over for us from the second that we read the short story and said we want to turn this into a feature film uh, we went down into uh, we engaged a uh, fantastic writer Brianna Soto mm -hmm. who delivered a fantastic script uh -huh. and in that script the storyline took place in Bainbridge Georgia and we had never heard of Bainbridge Georgia before uh -huh. uh, so my two partners and I uh, we went to Bainbridge and they went out on Scott locations uh, to look at the different locations throughout Bainbridge that were perfect uh, mm -hmm. 
for our film. Bainbridge is a beautiful little town stuck in time. Per perfect courthouse, Times Square. I mean, it was ideal uh -huh. for what we needed. And I met with some pillars in the, of the community there. And uh, we ended up staying on the ground for eight months almost straight. Uh, we raised about uh -huh. $4 million from investors throughout the Atlanta area and throughout uh, from Atlanta down to Bainbridge. Oh, our wow. investors are kind of in the corridor between Atlanta and Bainbridge. Oh, and okay. uh, without those investors and their support, uh, we wouldn't be here today. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, good. Now, so what was, um, tell me about challenges as you go now. You got, you got the script, you got the location. Of course, now you got to work out the sure, sure. Cast once and once, we, once yeah. we had the financing secured, uh, again we uh, engaged a fantastic crew, and uh, one of those crews was a casting agent uh, that we brought in, and uh, we were very, very blessed with this cast. You've seen yeah. the list itself. We brought in Alex and Graham Miller played our identical twins, mm. and they actually won an award in the uh, Internet uh, First Glance Film Festival in L.A. Uh, they jointly won an award as Best Actor. They did a phenomenal job. Really? We also brought in Michael Rooker, who plays the sheriff in our film. Michael's a, a Hollywood uh -huh. legend. We brought in uh, Ray Weiss, uh, Daniel Simonis, Robin Lively, W. Earl Brown. Uh -huh. uh, and of course, as you know, we brought in Travis Tritt, yeah. the country yeah. western legend. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, Travis has a future in film, let me tell you. He did a fantastic job. Well, what, what was it like to, to approach him? Or, or first off, how did his name get put in the hat? Sure. You know, we originally, as we first uh, developed this project, TJ and Josh said that they envisioned Alan Jackson being perfect for this role. And Alan, unfortunately, had a prior commitment when we engaged with his, uh, his team. And uh, Alan, one of Alan's managers, said, let's get this over to Travis Tritt. And we got the script over to Travis. And uh, uh, Travis is a very strong Christian, a good spiritual guy. He read the script. Uh, he was able to relate to his character, Eddie Waters. Uh -huh. And uh, he did a fantastic job. I think you'd be thrilled when you see the film. Wow, wow, yeah. cool. Now, how long was... Um filming how long did that take we shot for uh, we shot five hour days uh, we averaged 16 and a half hours a day okay. for 27 days just over five weeks wow. we were on location for uh, uh, our, the principals were on location for months but our whole team and our cast were on locations in the town of Bainbridge uh, for a month and a half two months it was oh and goodness. it was an amazing experience wow. that community really rolled out the red carpet for us literally and uh, while we were shooting we had uh, different pastors that led prayer uh, for our our crew. Uh, we had people from different churches coming in and delivering us pound cakes and soup, and it was wow. just an awesome, awesome experience. <laughs> that is really cool. Yes, sir. Uh, now, some people don't uh, realize this, but me, of course, uh, you know, coming from the business and having a heart in it, that, you know, you get the money, you get the script, you, you film it, you shoot it, and you probably even edit it, but some people don't realize 40 to 60 percent of movies that get done and finished die right there but they get put in the shelf they unfortunately don't... we can actually relate to that yeah. uh, we finished the film in, in about a year after we uh, wrapped principal photography we did some reshoots and uh, added some really key elements to our message of forgiveness in our film mm -hmm. and in September of 2011 almost a year to the day that we rolled cameras originally we finished our film and we engaged with a uh, financial group that promise to lead us to the promised land and uh, yeah. likes happen so often uh, in this industry secular or in the faith-based industry yeah. uh, they didn't deliver and uh, our investors were forced to take uh, uh, about a year's delays while we regrouped regrouped uh -huh. and uh, as we know now something that we're of course going to discuss uh, we believe in our hearts that uh, God wanted us to wait for Seatsy that yeah. was in development for three years and was just opened in uh, June of this past summer. Yeah. Uh, we now are releasing our film via Seatsy, uh, a revolutionary yeah. new Christian uh, ticket reservation platform that's going to change everything in faith-based films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I want to talk about that. In fact, I um, told you, you know, we recently had uh, Kelly uh, Grayson, who's a star of uh, Alone, uh, yet, Alone, not Alone Yet Not Alone, yes. and they had released uh, the film under the same uh, label, C -C. C -C. Yes, that's correct. So exactly, yeah, yeah, tell us, because it's a whole something we've never seen before. Absolutely not. Alone, and, uh, yeah. Alone Yet Not Alone, by the way, did fantastic in the box office this, yeah. this past weekend opening via CT. We're uh, really yeah. thrilled for the producers of that cast and crew, and we're very thrilled for uh, CT as well, for yes. the job they've done. Um, CT is uh, uh, an element where we go into it, it enables us to measure support 
in key markets. Mm -hmm. So we will, uh, uh, for example, our film is releasing, we have a sneak peek release on, in 12 cities on November 1st, and uh, uh, then we're gonna have a wider release in March of next year, where in those 12 cities where we've announced that we're bringing the movie on November 1st, we opened up CT campaigns in those cities, different pastors get behind those campaigns and reserve tickets. Uh, we now have over a thousand tickets reserved already, 29 days before release, uh, over a thousand tickets in each of those 12 markets already. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and just real quick, uh, say, what are those, uh, I had them right here, the, those markets, what are those cities? Uh, you know what, we're making our official announcements uh, in the next 48 hours. Okay, So okay. I've got to be careful, but I can yeah, say yeah. Uh, we're releasing in Tallahassee, Florida, in Aurora, oh. Illinois. We're releasing in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we're releasing in Fort Myers, Florida. We're releasing in Springfield, Missouri, uh, uh, and several other markets. Are you releasing Mon in Bainbridge? Monroe, just for them? Tallahassee, <laughs> Tallahassee okay. uh, is just uh, a yeah. uh, a few miles south of okay. Bainbridge. So and, and, all of our sport in Bainbridge is coming down to the Tallahassee and, market. And you know, it's not, that's not too uh, odd from what uh, the film business has always done because, uh, you know, when you hear uh, at home, when you hear on the movies, you know, limited release and it will be nationally released later, um, very commonly when film studios don't know exactly how well a film's going to do, um, they will do that. They'll put in limited release, put it in L.A. and in New York, see how it does. Sure. And, and maybe do it, you know, in some, home, you know, somewhere, you know, Midwest or something. And, and then that's usually, then it's released from that, depending on the result of it and so but CT's taking it where it's not in the hands of studios anymore it's in the hands uh, of you the producer the filmmakers it's in the hand of the, uh, actually in the pastors and the Christians in those markets to That's... judge whether or not our film or other films uh, will garner their support and yeah. if they do CT enables us not to take a chance anymore on hoping that that people will support our film. We know yeah. already that over a thousand people in these markets have already said they're coming, and we of course anticipate walk-up traffic yeah. around that. It's, yeah. it's yeah, an amazing, exactly. amazing feature. Yeah. And not just said, because you know, all the time you invite people to a party, oh yeah, I'll come. Yeah. Now these are people, they've actually bought their ticket, it's in They've hand, actually so reserved coming. their ticket. Yeah. Okay. They, they reserve their ticket with their credit card on CTE via Amazon secured platform. Okay. And the credit cards aren't even run uh, until we go to release the okay. film, until we yeah. book the theater and confirm all that. So. Okay. Okay. They're not even, uh, they're just pinged uh, to show that it's an active car. But gotcha. these people, yes, to answer your question, have taken out their credit card and said, I'm reserving two tickets or four tickets or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, uh, just shy of 15,000 total yeah. tickets already uh, reserved on CT for our film. That's awesome. Now, uh, for uh, the pastors out there and, and church organizers, I know you... Uh, you're recently uh, also putting out a corresponding uh, a book and a leader's guide and everything to go along with it. Um, talk about that. Like, what, what's the central, you know, um, sure. lesson of this? You know, what, we, when we finished our, uh, uh, our, our movie, we engaged a company called Propeller in Nashville mm -hmm. that's run by a gentleman named Dan Merrill, who's also the founder of CT. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dan said, you guys did a fantastic job on this. We'd, I'd love to see a couple, I'd like to see a scene with this and a scene with this. And we had an added in those scenes and the reshoots to really hammer home uh, uh, the message of forgiveness. But we, at the same time, Dan asked us if we would consider spending close to $100,000 researching forgiveness with Barna. Mm -hmm. And we immediately agreed to. And Barna uh, uh, handed us a fantastic, a couple months later, a fantastic state of forgiveness research report that the data within this report was stunning. Uh, uh, Rick, two out of three people surveyed believe that they've harmed somebody in a manner that they'll never be forgiven for. Mm -hmm. Four out of five people surveyed believe that they uh, uh, have had someone harm them in a manner that they'll never forgive that person for. Yeah. One out of every three person, uh, every three people that we know sitting next to us in church on Sundays is suffering either mentally or physically from unforgiveness in some capacity. Wow. We plan to take that research along with our film to the pastors and say, pastors, here's a good movie to hopefully incite conversation regarding forgiveness, uh, wow. but there's a lot more to it than just the film itself. Let's use the film yeah. as a tool to use this research report, and now, as you just mentioned, uh, we have a youth ministry partner, Interlink, uh, that we just on Monday released a youth guide uh, for youth pastors 
any youth pastor that would like to receive this guide, it's free. Wow. And uh, anywhere in the country, anywhere on the planet for that matter, and it will be a guide on how to use our film and different scenes in our film uh, to, in, in, to discuss forgiveness and love and uh, uh, other key factors. Wow, that's awesome. That's great. Now, now where can people go to, to find out more about the film and, of course, get information about CT and everything? Sure. Uh, right now, you can go to uh, www.brotherskeeperfilm.com. And uh, if you go to brotherskeeperfilm.com, mm -hmm. there's a CT icon right on our film. You can click on, on, on our page, you can see our synopsis. You can see the movie trailer, a couple sneak peek scenes, uh, a full breakdown of our cast. But if you click on CT on our brotherskeeperfilm.com page, it'll take you right into our CT page. And uh, you can see all the different towns uh, where we have started CT campaigns. Right. You can see where the tickets have been reserved. Awesome. And that's very, very exciting. That's, that's great. Well, well, Steve, thank you so much. Much God for bless, Rick. Stopping by and Thank you so much for having putting us. Putting your heart into it. Absolutely. And of course, uh, we can't just sit here and talk about the film without teasing you a little bit. Uh, so, to leave you right now, here is, of course, the uh, trailer to Brothers Keeper. stand a chance without you. Don't be afraid. True love has no room for fear. I thank God every day for my true love. Isn't the guy supposed to pick up the girl? Aren't you supposed to take a date to the prom? Wow, Maggie. It's beautiful out tonight. It's perfect. I can't wait to marry you, Maggie. I fell in love with you today, Maggie. I've been in love with you ever since. What does Pete have that I don't have, huh? What's going on? Maggie Malloy. She's dead. The unsolved murders aren't the type of thing that draws people into a town. He killed her. He killed Maggie. She's gone. It was an accident, Dad. Until this is cleared up, they're gonna lock you up for this. They're not gonna listen to a single word you have to say. You never speak of this again. Do you understand me? Police have arrested Andy Goodwin after he surrendered himself early this morning and charged him in the beating of Gordon Lee Master. The circumstances surrounding the death of Maggie Malloy remain unclear. Let's make this fast and easy. Write down everything you remember from last night, how you killed the girl, anything else you remember, just jot it down. All right. What happened when you re-entered the bathroom? I saw Peter kill Maggie with his hands around her throat. The people have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, including an eyewitness, Mr. Peter Goodwin, killed young Maggie, my lord. I'm sick in the cage. We need to die. And I'm going to be there to watch him suffer. He is nothing more than a boy. This is about life and death. I'll ruin everything. I'm the stupid. You're the perfect one. He didn't do it. He's innocent. As long as you can pull air into your lungs, you've got potential. Potential to help somebody right up to the very end.